About 16 storage units were involved in the fire, but they're still working to learn more about heat and smoke damage. This sidewalk was shoveled at some point, but it remains pretty slippery. Whether that's your driver's license or a passport. Legos, art kits, and even sport items. They contain between 150 and 180 parking spots. This pavement is 20 degrees. I have a sword, Polly the parrot, and this is actually my new hair that I'm going to be wearing on the show. They expect to be on scene for at least the next two to three hours and checking back throughout the day. I'm about to beat Brad to the bottom of the hill. I'm ready. Go. And they've been working for almost three hours since then, trying to contain an ammonia spill. Scan, unlock, and hop on. But new ordinances from city council. She did not just tell me how to work off the candy. She showed me and did not take it easy. I've been on scene of this accident all morning and I've just learned from state police that it was a head on collision and there was a fatality. This crash happened around 430 this morning. You can take a look at this video. You can see the general area. This is at the intersection of Lawyer Road and Port Republic. There were members of the Grotto's fire department on scene as well as the Rockingham County Sheriff's Office. State police are here now investigating and I'm told the road will be closed for an undetermined amount of time, but they are estimating it could be closed for about two hours. WHSC will have more online if you stay with us as this story develops. Reporting live in Rockingham County, Monica Casey, WHSV. Before December of 2017, for these offenders, jail was the only option. This court is a community effort at all levels, from Judge Bruce Albertson to Commonwealth's Attorney Marsha Garst, members of law enforcement and the Community Service Board, and the defense attorney for each applicant. The participants are classified as high risk, high need. Being sober and doing the right thing, and it, I've seen how it pays off, you know what I mean, and everything good that comes from it, and I like that. More than 20 years of drug addiction. In and out of trouble, in and out of prison. Jimmy Gibson was taken from his biological parents at a young age. So I guess drugs was my way out. So I started using them when I was about 12. And was in and out of foster care and group homes. That's just all I've known for, I'm 35 now. His longest stint in prison, four and a half years. I was addicted to anything that changed my, my thought process. You know, anything, didn't matter what it was, whether it was marijuana, or meth or pills. The five months in this program, the longest he's ever been clean. You have to change the people, places, and things if you really want it. In this program, you have to want it. Each plan is tailored to that person. You can incarcerate people repeatedly, but they're not getting better. And their individual addiction. This is a structured environment where they report and actually come in and see court services. Commonwealth's attorney Marsha Garst traveled to other jurisdictions studying their court systems. Our jail is very crowded. She calls the drug treatment court a bargain. This is an opportunity for nonviolent offenders to actually be out, be getting better and contributing. Um, and to make a situation where you're not um, a burden on taxpayers. The numbers back that up. Incarceration in the county jail costs about $60 a day per inmate. Rockingham County Sheriff Brian Hutchison says thousands of dollars are spent on medication each month on top of the cost to house, feed, and transport inmates. The program has multiple phases. Sometimes when you're so drug addicted, you kind of forget what's right and what's wrong. With classes such as moral recognition therapy. You go back and learn what you were taught in kindergarten and Sunday school. Participants are drug tested twice a week. People that, you know, I've seen go to jail repeatedly for this problem, finally clean. Um, it's, it's a big, it's a big bonus to see that in my position when usually I don't get to see a happy ending. And that's what Gibson is hoping for. Now that he's seeing things with clear vision after hearing his family's cries for help. And my, my youngest was like, Daddy, I, please don't go away again. Please don't go away again. And I have my fiance, she's in my corner. She is, is an amazing woman. Garst hopes to eventually double the court size to 40 members thanks to a grant from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. She also wants to focus on housing for participants. This B-17 aircraft is one of just a few still flying in the United States. Over the next two days, you could have the chance not only to step foot inside, but also to take a quick ride. <laughs> it's not like one of these jets where you just push a button and get going to go somewhere. 
you're actually hands on the whole time. 17 is particularly heavy on the controls because there's no boost or anything. It's all fully in cable. Sometimes you're wrestling a gorilla, and sometimes you're afraid you're going to fall asleep. A mobile memorial taking you up in the air and back in time. The 909 was one of the most famous airplanes in the 8th Air Force. It did 140 missions. They never lost a crew member to combat, never missed a target, and never had a mechanical aboard. Some visitors to the Shenandoah Valley Airport canceling plans and traveling two and a half hours for the exhibit. My dad, Walter Ferguson Freeman, was a bombardier on a B-24, the Liberator, in Italy the last two years of the war. He was 17 when he signed on. He lied about his age. He co-signed for his mom. That was the way, that was what war was back then. The Wings of Freedom Tour educates. We try to bring the veterans out to talk to the kids and tell them what it was like. I came today to walk through the plane that is similar to the one that he flew. And honors those who served with the Living History event. The conversations that I've had today with the men that are here that have, that were in World War II are more than special. I just value every single veteran of every single war that keeps us free America. All four planes will be here at SHG until Friday at noon, ready to fly you back into the 1940s. In Weir's Cave, Monica Casey, WHSV. That's a good story, I thought. Beverly Garber has lots of good stories. Uh, December 11th, 1868, the first train came through Timberville, uh, Broadway, and went on to Harrisonburg. Okay, this is the old post office building. It was built in 1912 by Charlie Forney. And right here is me. He's been instrumental in opening the Plains District Memorial Museum, showcasing history of the area. It was known as Williamsport. Then in uh, 1833, it was known as uh, Thompson Store. And then 1850, it was Riddle's Tavern. The oldest building. You can see how they were notched out, I guess with an axe. Dates back to the 1750s. John Ziegler purchased the home in 1816. One of the main guys that helped establish Timberville, really. He also built a barn. And uh, that's where the first worship services in Timberville were held. And At risk during the Civil War. Uh, they were the old dunkards, didn't believe in war. They wouldn't take sides or anything. The Yankees lit the, lit the brush pile in the garden and they just rode off. And that's how the barn survived. The Civil War wasn't the only conflict with an effect on the area. I see one of the guard houses pretty well, and there's another one back there. During World War II, 600 people were held. They worked at the uh, Poulter plant and up at Ziegler's Cannery. In a German prisoner of war camp. And uh, the farmers would come and, and take a crew of them out and work on the farm to support them. They worked in the orchards and so forth. and. Uh, uh, all the old people used to tell me it was a German prisoner just to be singing up a storm. Those weren't the only visitors. You could say at that time he was the most famous person in the world. Charles Lindbergh came through town. You know how little towns are. You're supposed to keep a secret. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> there was about 500 people down there that day. when I taken these myself of Charles A. Lindbergh, November 18th, 1927. W, uh, it was W.C. Hoover Field, and she signed her name Rebecca. That was my Aunt Becky. At the museum, you can see more photos of Lindbergh's visit as well as other parts of the town's history. In Timberville, Monica Casey, WHSV.